Chinese state media warns that the country's longest river is now witnessing its fifth round of peak flooding this year. And that's as heavy downpours in central and southern China are leaving multiple regions submerged. An online video shows locals from Jingtang County in China's Sichuan province still able to dine in a restaurant doused in flood water on Saturday. But a day later, the first and second floor of the downtown area were completely underwater. Officials announced on Monday this year's fifth flood peak in China, which came only two days after the fourth one. Chinese media reported that the flood level in the county is the second highest in recorded history. An online video showing the Three Gorges Dam has opened eight flood discharging outlets to release the water. In the mountainous Wen County of Gansu Province, landslides and heavy downpour are leaving houses submerged in water. The filmer of this video says there are people on the rooftops waiting for rescue. A state media report confirmed that some residents are trapped on top of houses, and the flood has not spared the northern region. In Shandong Province's Yinan County, heavy rain soaked a cattle farm, drowning over a hundred cattle. Some were swept away by flood water. Officials say water level for several branches of the Yangtze River will continue to increase in the coming days. They warned of more floods in the Yangtze as well as the northern Yellow, Hai and Songhua rivers. Despite the scale of the damage, state media TV broadcasts are occupied with rescue efforts and other propaganda. The regime has been criticized for its censorship in flood reporting. The month-long floods have caused concerns over further economic downturns, threats over whether the Three Gorges Dam can take the pressure from more floods, and fears over the potential spread of the virus caused by the floods. The floods are also partially responsible for China's deepening food crisis, as officials announced grain production has decreased by a third compared with last year. Penny Zhou, NTD News. One of China's biggest internet celebrities joined a Chinese Communist Party youth group. Experts are weighing in on what role she may serve for the party. NTD's Tiffany Meyer brings us more. Now let's take a look at one of China's biggest internet celebrities. You may have seen her on YouTube, a Chinese girl who seemingly lives a fairy tale life. In peaceful rural areas, she uses flowers to make blushers, sleeps under a tree, and makes delicious food for herself and her grandma. Her name is Li Ziqi, and she just became a member of a youth group led by the Chinese Communist Party. What sets Li apart from her peers is her influence in the West. Even though both Facebook and YouTube are banned in China, Li has amassed quite some fans on both platforms. Her YouTube channel has over 11 million subscribers. That's more than the BBC and Fox's YouTube channel. On Facebook, she has over 3 million followers. Experts told Voice of America that China is trying to utilize its internet celebrities' influence to create soft power for the country. Put simply, to make people have a good impression of China and ultimately the Chinese Communist Party. And Li could be a good choice for that. Stanley Rosen, a professor of Chinese politics at Southern California, told VOA that he thinks there is no question that the party wants to co-opt these individuals for domestic and international purposes. The latter is clear from the YouTube channel, since YouTube is banned in China. Plans may have been long in the making. In 2014, China's Communist Youth League created a five-year plan to groom influencers that can be owned and used by the organization. In a 2018 campaign, the Communist Youth League promoted 100 internet celebrities as role models. Li was one of them. The next year, Li became an ambassador of an association under the Youth League. But in China, influencers have to toe the party line or else they could suffer harsh penalties. In 2018, authorities jailed a super popular live streamer for singing the national anthem in a disrespectful way. In the same year, after banning actors with tattoos on television, China's top media regulators said celebrities whose heart and morality are not in line with the party will be banned from television. Now our China affairs analyst Jason Ma will show us a unique aircraft. Its official name is Rotorcraft, nicknamed the Aerial Tricycle. But today, the U.S. rotorcraft isn't the one in the spotlight. Instead, we'll take a look at a piece of advanced equipment made only for China's special forces. 
When I first saw the report saying that the CCP special forces had been heavily equipped with this aerial tricycle, I thought some netizens were spoofing the CCP. Later, I did some research online and found that it was actually true. And what surprised me even more was that in 2019, during the CCP's military parade, this aerial tricycle, an advanced kind of special forces equipment, actually appeared. It was displayed in the military parade to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the founding of China's communist regime. Chinese state-run media claim that it has great military value, saying it has short takeoff and landing distances, can fly at low speeds and low altitudes, is easy to drive, cheap and easy to conceal. However, when I read relevant materials, I could not help but feel that I was reading grotesque novels or black humor. In order for me to read it seriously, I had to remind myself again and again that this should be in fact a world-leading device from the CCP, and this is serious and that I must study carefully. It can carry disposable multi-purpose rocket launchers, one of which was even equipped with missiles. Later, those models were dropped. In this open space like a convertible car, I am really worried that the missile launch will injure the passengers. The CCP initially planned to use this aerial tricycle to launch paratroopers, but the experiment found that with a strong air current, paratroopers were easily injured by the rear propellers. In addition, there are only a few passengers and a low passenger capacity, so they had to give up the idea of using it with paratroopers. An article praising the device suggests that it will show great power when the CCP attacks Taiwan. The logic is very simple. This judgment is made based on distance alone. The article claims that this kind of aerial tricycle can fly up to 370 miles. The Taiwan Strait is only 120 to 200. The Taiwan Strait is only 120 to 200 miles away. The article says it can take off from coastal bases, cross the strait, and open up a kind of through train across the strait. And once it is realized, it will definitely become a classic special operation and go down. In history. The development personnel of this device may have all complied that the enemy's weapons and combat effectiveness are about the same level as people in China, whose houses are demolished by authorities. They can only throw stones, burning bottles, and the like. Whenever the opponent has a decent weapon, soldiers riding this aerial tricycle become the opponent's living targets due to its low speed, especially when it descends. An article said that the improved flight equipment can reach 370 miles due to the aero engine Bombardi's Rotax. I checked and found that this is an Austrian company, BRP Rotax. China's military industry is proud of this airplane and showed it off during the military parade, saying it's the world's leading model, but its core components are still from another country. The CCP's media said that the regime's special forces really like it. I fully believe and understand this. If I have a gun at home and my family allows me to buy it and to shoot the tree in my backyard, I will be very happy to play and enjoy that gun. But one day, if you force me to take this gun to the battlefield and fight against the opponent's machine gun, I will hate this gun and you. 